Holy greetings and God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is Scott Bradley coming to you again, sharing with you some of the things that the Lord has laid upon our heart as we've been going forth in this series of presentations over the past couple of weeks. And we certainly hope that you have been blessed. We want to encourage you to check out our website, scottbradleyministries.vpweb. That's V as in Victor, P as in Paul vpweb.com and uh, also we'd like to hear your comments and let like know how you've been blessed by these series these presentations that we've been doing we've talked on various subjects uh, in times past and well as the lord continues to drop these uh, in my spirit i was in prayer this morning and this particular one that we're getting ready to share with you today came over me concerning healing uh and i'm talking about healing in spirit a lot of times what happens to us is that because we are two-thirds spiritual i'm getting ready to explain that in a second uh, we can be afflicted spiritually, and it affects us physically. Uh, would you believe me if I told you that a lot of times our physical affliction is not really the source of the problem? And sometimes we can go seeking healing and deliverance and, and curation uh, for the affliction that we're suffering when the reality, the source of it, is much deeper. Now, as I said before, we consist of two-thirds spiritual. And I'm going to break that down in a second. We consist of one-third physical body, two-thirds spiritual, soul, and spirit. I've talked about this in presentations past, and I want to go over it again because I want us to get a full understanding as to our character and our content, how the Lord has so designed us. Again, the body, the physical body, is only designed for time. Uh, oftentimes, we make provisions for the body. We make provisions for uh, this life. We make provisions, and, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, but sometimes we overemphasize the physical. We, we, we maintain the physical uh, in good top condition, which is a good thing, because, of course, the better shape you're in, the longer you're going to live, and the better you're going to enjoy a healthy lifestyle. But I want to reiterate that even though we do all of these things, the body is only designed for time. Time brings about a change and, and there's nothing you do about it it's inevitable and sooner or later the body's going to die i don't care how well you keep in shape how well you eat right and again all of these things are good things but all it simply does is prolong the inevitable but we are two-thirds spiritual we are more spiritual in our content than we are physical we consist of the soul and the spirit uh, what is the, the difference between the soul and the spirit? Even though they're both spiritual, there is a difference. The difference is this. The soul, of course, is the conscious state of you. You are your soul, your awareness, your consciousness. Uh, the words of the enlightener, Rene Descartes, who said, I think, therefore I am, was right on in description of the soul. And the reason why we know this is because even when Jesus spoke of the story of the rich man that died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, Every mental and emotional facility that he had with this world, he took with him to the next. He had all five senses. He had a memory. He could communicate with Abraham. He recognized Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Uh, again, he was conscious. He felt the torture and the torment of the flame. Uh, and so his conscious awareness, his, his, his ability to comprehend, to think, and to uh, uh, experience all five senses is the soul. That's the soul of you. Do you believe, would you believe me if I told you, brothers and sisters, that when we step into the other side and we leave time into eternity, all of the emotional and mental facilities that we have in this world, we will take with us to the next. But then there is the spirit. And this is what I want to dwell on this evening today, because the spirit uh, is one of the most uh, uh, important parts of us in the spiritual sense. Because the spirit, the Lord began to deal with me on this a number of years ago, that the spirit is the personality or the character of the person meaning this everybody does not have the same spirit because everybody does not have the same personality and it doesn't mean that one is better than the other it doesn't mean that one is greater than the other it simply means that we are different personalities and, and in, in fact we have different likes and dislikes you know one of the mistakes that we sometimes make even in the church is we try to make everybody like the same thing we try to make clones out of people you know if i like it and i'm saved you should like it too because you're saved that's not always the case everybody does not like the same thing everybody does not have the same ministry which i found when i was coming up in the church sometime a mistake uh, whereas people would try to put you on a guilt trip because you didn't have their ministry i see it now even you know that uh we, we try to sometimes even train people uh, in areas that they're not really equipped in, and it's not part of their heart. And I found out something, and I'll share this with you, brothers and sisters that are listening to me. When you get into the ministry that God has called you to, it becomes your strength. It becomes your inspiration. What do you mean by that? I mean this. Myself as a minister, the Lord called me uh, in ministry, as I've oftentimes said at an early age. I was a, a young lad at 16 years old when I first started preaching. Ministry, preaching, 
became a part of me. It, it's something that I love to do. It's something that, that I've done consistently down for the past 41 years that I've been in ministry. The ministry has been my strength. Meaning this, there are times I can be troubled, there are times I can be depressed, there are times I can be going through trials and tests, there are times I can be hurt, there are times I can go through all of the emotions, negative emotions that anybody would go to, go through. But if I'm allowed to stand before the congregation and preach, it becomes my strength and my inspiration and keeps me going. Uh, in many cases, it's not always a matter of the money. I may not get nothing. There are plenty of times I preached and didn't get anything for my preaching, for example, doing these a telecast, these these presentations, but uh, they become my strength. I become very much inspired. I become very much delivered when I deliver myself to you, uh, sharing this word of God. And I find a lot of time what happens even in churches, sometimes people don't find their niche, if I can use that term. They don't find their niche in ministry or their place in ministry. And as a result, they begin to lose interest real quick. But when you begin to find your calling in ministry, it becomes a part of your spirit and a part of your personality. And consequently, it becomes your strength. Uh, some people will do things that other people can't do. And sometimes you look at people and wonder, why do they do that? How do they do that? I would never do that if I were them. Well, of course not, because it's not your ministry, and you can't really understand why people do what they do, even though in many cases there's no rewards, there's no accolades, at least none that we see. Nobody pats them on the back. They don't get their name called. You know, they're not making a lot of money, but they continue to do it faithfully and consistently because it is a part of their personality. It's embedded in their spirit, and it becomes their strength. And I would encourage you to find your ministry. Where do you belong in ministry? You know, it reminds me of the story of the late Mother Teresa, uh, who, who uh, had a tremendous ministry where she ministered to sick people. She, she, she uh, ministered to people that were in, in slums. She was in Calcutta, India, one of the, one of the poorest places in the entire earth. Uh, and a millionaire, according to the story, a millionaire had heard about the tremendous humanitarian work that she had done and wanted to sponsor her. And so he went uh, and visited her there in Calcutta, India, and, and they said that as he followed her around and began to watch some of the things she did, like like changing bedpans and and uh, dressing these hideous sores, and, and he said the stench was so bad, the smell was so bad, until he just got sick watching what she did and, and, and being in that environment. He got so sick, and, and he said to her, he said, I would not do what you do for a million dollars. And according to the story, her response was, I wouldn't do it for a million dollars either. In other words, I don't do it for the money. I don't do it for the accolades or, or who would, 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 would call my name. I do it because it's in me. It's a part of me. It's in my spirit. And brothers and sisters, this is what happens when God fills us with the Holy Spirit. Spirit connects with spirit. And so what God does, he puts his spirit in our spirit. And you know what? Anything that, 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 that is in our spirit affects our personality. That's why even when it comes to healing, you know, sometimes what people really need, going back to my original point, a lot of times people don't really need a cure. They don't need a medication. They need a healing, a healing in their spirit. Because sometimes we can go through things in our life that afflict our spirit and as a result afflict our personality. That's why sometimes people have a bitter personality or an angry personality or timid personality because something has happened in their life that has affected their spirit. And when God delivers a man, when God delivers a woman, what he simply does is go into the spirit and purge us in spirit, which is why every now and then all of us need God to deliver us because we can carry things. We can carry hurts. Sometimes those hurts and that heartbreak goes all the way back to experiences of childhood, goes all the way back to when we were young, things that, that we've never gotten over because they're embedded in our spirit. And as a result, in the long run, it affects our personality and in many cases can affect even our how far we go in life. But God wants to deliver us in spirit. And so that's what deliverance is. And so I want to encourage you to seek God, to heal you in spirit. Lord, heal my spirit. Heal my mind so I can think right. Heal the hurt and the pain and the things that I've covered because it affects my personality. And it affects my motivation. That's why some people have a jubilant spirit. And that's what joy does. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength because joy is a part of a spiritual connection. When our joy comes alive, it automatically stimulates courage. It automatically stimulates faith. When your joy is full, you don't have to pray for more faith and more courage and more love. Automatically stimulated because joy gets in your spirit. That's why the Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
God bless you, brothers and sisters. We're going to cut off here. We may pick this up a little bit later, but I want to encourage you to continue to watch us. We've got some more interesting things that we're going to be dealing with in the very near future. Uh, the Lord just dropped this in my spirit this morning. We still want to deal on the subject of the Bible. Where did the Bible come from? How did we get the Bible? We're going to be talking about that in the very near future, but we want you to continue to pray for us. Please leave your comments. Let me know how you're being blessed by these presentations, if in fact you're being blessed at all. Uh, again, go to our website at CRI Itinerary, where we're going to be preaching various parts of the country this month of August. We're going to be in various parts parts of the country. Uh, also, uh, you know, if you, if you need to book us for, for speaking engagements, look uh, in the website. We've got the information how to contact us, Some ordering some of our books, ordering some of our CDs and various other articles that we have, things that we have that will bless your heart. Till next time, this is Scott Bradley saying God bless you. Pray for us, and we'll be sharing with you again real soon.